people ask me about my algos and I'm going to give you a layman's terminology and understanding of what they are and what they do. Um, it's really not for the crypto market and the reason why is crypto market is a raw market, meaning it's driven by uh, non-institutional investors and non-program uh, oriented buying and selling uh, by institutions that use algorithms and mathematicians. Uh, the crypto market is very raw. Uh, it's very different and it's very difficult for, you know, the algos just don't really work well in this type of market. It's too new and fresh. Um, but where the algos do work, that I'll show you, uh, is in Forex and bigger markets where it's really institutionally run with mathematical algorithms and uh, buy and sell programs. And that's what I do. I'm a hunter of buy and sell programs statistically and I use three key pieces and they're three separate algorithms that work in conjunction with each other. You have time, you have arc, which is the energy, and you have vector, which is the geometry. So we got time, energy, and basically price. And uh, visually what you can see is what you're used to seeing on charts and, and that's the geometry or the vectoring of price and, and whatnot. And you can show, choose and tell what's likely to occur. Time is when things are likely to start to occur. And the arc is the energy, the compression or the um, expansion of energy when you know it lets loose and it moves and whatnot. So these are three separate things that work in conjunction with each other to go over and give me a statistical basis of trading. And um, there, I don't know of any people that do anything similar to this other than someone like um, Jim Simons, which is, uh, he's a, uh, the Renaissance, one of the richest men in the world because he uses uh, science and data to go over and trade out, you know, algorithms. And he's done this for like 30 something or 40 something years. Um, but as an example, here is a, a pair that I traded way back when, uh, years ago. And this is something that uh, some bigger money followed me on. And, uh, you know, they were a bank, actually, and they wanted my, you know, uh, Euro ver Canadian dollar trade. And uh, I gave them the breakdown of what I thought was likely to occur. And this was a high probability trade. It was, you know, it only happens every so many months. You get really a perfect setup. And this was um, it. And they went along with me on this trade. And you can see. Um, there's all kinds of lines there, but basically think of it as a box. So the start of that box on the top and that where it points and this is your X and Y axis and, and I calculate this to go over when the start time is going to start and when it's going to finish. And it can be multiple boxes. For example, this had two different, uh, delineations. It had one, the shorter box, the inside red box. And then you had the longer term box, the, uh, the, the bigger red box uh, going out forward in time. So that's a longer period of time. And uh, the breakdown of that, as you can see, it followed flight paths. And I gave calculations of what was the most likely flight path it was to follow. And, you know, none of this is perfect, but it, uh, uh, if you're right a, a higher percentage of time than you're wrong, you make money. And if you can predict the, the, the start point, end point of a up or down move, uh, you can make a lot of money. So anyway, this was an example of the kind of trade that was done. And uh, these algorithms, those three separate algorithms, time, you know, arc and uh, vector, uh, basically time, energy and price, um, that was an example. And you can see how the trade turned out for the start and end time and whatnot and how it bounced up right after when it ended, you know, it, it came towards that end point there. And that was often uh, a normalized thing to occur. So anyway, that is a brief and layman's term description of what I use. And it's mostly for the FX markets and for other markets where I trade against the buy and sell programs and the algorithms of the mathematically entwined trading as an aggregate of all their programs, like kind of a, like a cloud sitting above 
uh, to get a really good understanding of uh, the price uh, mechanics and likelihood of what's going to occur. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and on to the update. I'm doing an update, but there's really nothing to go on about. The market is just blah and uh, we have to wait and I know that might suck for some of you and you might be coming impatient, but that's life and I do what the market says. I don't really care one way or the other. So that's just what the market is basically saying. Now let me show you something that I totally am against and I've made note of this in the past is this is chasing the dragon. Um, knobs and people like to buy high and sell low. It's common occurrence. Uh, so they'll get into a run like this, like off of the Dodge coin, and they'll be going, they'll get all excited and emotional and everything. And they'll actually buy the tops, like what you see up here. And once they get stuck in it, you get the crash. And then what happens is it crashes all the way down, and then they're like, oh, this is a scam, da da da, and they sell. And they'll sell at this level down here, and you know they'll go on to the next stupid thing that they decide emotionally what they're going to do. And sometimes they'll even get lucky, but overall, they lose money. And if you don't want to be a loser who loses money over time, don't practice stupid things. Don't gamble. And this is gambling. And that's not what I do. And I want to be very clear on that. Over time, I make money and I don't go over and fight the market or try to tell it what's right or wrong or try to catch the, the you know, the golden ticket and so forth. I grind it out. And if you decide to do stuff like this, I can't stop you. But I can tell you what you're likely to, to end up. You're going to get real high and you're going to do really great and then you're going to do really horrible. And, and you're going to likely have less money than you started with. That's what 90% of people that trade this way do, just so you know. Um, but anyway, that's just a word to the wise and, and a warning. Uh, let's go to Bitcoin and take a look at see what's going on where we are. We're nowhere. We're basically just going up and down and just going sideways. I'm still waiting for us to go down to here and I have nothing to do or up to here. So I'm waiting for numbers that get above here and here or down to here. That's it. I've got nothing else to do. I'll just wait patiently. I don't get to decide what the market wants to do. Market does what it wants to do. And I just, you know, act accordingly. The nice thing about silver right here is that it's going over and showing us that it still has plenty of upside potential and it's looking pretty good, which is a complete contrary to what you see in the stock market. And again, the Fed and Trump and so forth for an election year, and this happens throughout history. You know, in election years, you don't see markets crash during election years. That just doesn't happen. And the reason why is because uh, the, uh, the, the governing body, the people who are in office, make sure that they provide, uh, through mainly money supply, um, enough liquidity to go over and keep everybody happy. And right now, we've got tons of liquidity simply because of the coronavirus and the government spending and whatnot. Of course, it's all taxpayer dollar and nobody's paying attention to that. And the ramifications of that later on in the, the year or years to come, it's going to be ugly. I mean, go to your store and notice your food prices. This is the, the first way to tell is go to your store and forget about, you know, the doomsayers and all of these guys who've gone on about the end of the, uh, the financial collapse and stuff like that. Forget about stuff like that. Look at the real world, go to the store, and notice food prices. Go When you go out to eat or when you go to uh, uh, Taco Bell or wherever, notice the price of what you're paying for food. 
and then notice other assets. If you notice that more homes for sale start popping up and the prices start to lower, they start to become competitive. These are all indicators and uh, this is going to be something that's going to occur as time goes on and it's inevitable. Um, you know, it's just it's uh, nobody pays attention to the cycles nobody's paying attention to what happened in 1929 um, and that we're 90 years away from that in um, 2020 nobody's paying any attention just like you know nobody in 1929 paid any attention to what happened 90 years before then and so forth so <laughs> You know, through the 1840s up to the mid 1840s, they had a horrible, horrible recession, but nobody paid any attention to it. Right? Um, in 1929, nobody expected the stock market to crash. It was going to the moon, and you know, it's, the cycles repeat themselves. So, such is life. But anyway, um, right now I'm doing absolutely nothing. We're flatlined. Everything is super constricted right here, and we're just waiting. The likelihood is that we drop down, and that's all there is. You know, we've got levels that go under here, down to here, down to here. So where we go, nobody knows, but the statistics and the odds are to the downside. And that's all there is on it. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll update you later on when something actually happens. Alrighty, bye.